Today, we'll be learning about optimizing our health systems using a once-and-done approach to healthcare. These days, many countries are trying to strengthen their health systems and enable universal access to care services. But how can we do this? In order to improve our health system, we have to consider the stakeholders who use our health system. Stakeholders like Sarah, a new mother, who just wants the best care for her family. Allison, a provider at a local clinic, who wants to deliver the best care possible while optimizing her workload. And Mary, a health system manager who wants to ensure that services in her country are delivered effectively and efficiently. In many countries, health systems managers will derive a series of indicators to measure their performance of meeting a particular health goal. For example, Mary knows pertussis is a serious problem in her country for children. She also knows that if you vaccinate children properly, you greatly reduce their risk of contracting the disease. Mary might create a series of indicators which track the doses of vaccinations given to children in her country. She could ask clinicians to track these numbers, either using paper or electronic forms, and report them to a health management information system on a regular basis. There, Mary could derive a series of reports to measure the performance of her health system. Meanwhile, Sarah's baby is due for its first checkup. She visits Allison's local clinic. Allison knows she should follow the care protocol for childhood checkup. First, she weighs Sarah's baby. Then she'll assess the baby's health and compare its growth to guidelines. Finally, if it's safe to do so, she'll vaccinate the child. Allison may also give Sarah a vaccination card so she can keep track of her child's vaccination progress. Allison has access to the Ministry of Health's HMIS Aggregate Data Entry Portal. At the end of the month, she tallies up the number of children she gave vaccinations to and enters it into the HMIS. Sometime later, Sarah returns to Allison's clinic for her child's next scheduled checkup. But this time, when Allison weighs the child, she notices it's a little bit underweight. Allison checks the vaccination program guidance, nutrition guidance charts, and wonders whether it's really safe to give the child the vaccination. She decides to postpone it. It's better to be safe. At the end of the month, Allison once again enters the administrations of each vaccine given in her clinic. But Allison knows there's more to the story than what she's reporting to the Ministry of Health. As a clinician, she knows that several children had adverse events and had to stop treatment. Several children showed up with no vaccination cards, and she had to restart their vaccination schedule. And she knows that one child was ineligible to receive a vaccination. Not only that, but keeping track of all these tallies is really adding to Allison's workload. She's spending up to 33% of her time filling out these indicator reports. Meanwhile, at the Ministry of Health, Mary is quite happy with the data she's receiving. Her HMIS provides really nice maps and charts of her health system performance indicators. However, she's noticing some of her data doesn't quite add up. Her HMIS is telling her that she has 90% vaccination coverage. However, there have been a lot of hospital discharges with cases of pertussis. How could this be? Mary decides to investigate her HMIS data, but all she sees are aggregate numbers. She wonders, what was the actual adherence to the clinical protocols? How many children started the vaccination protocol but didn't finish it? And how accurate are these numbers anyways? Not only that, but Mary wants to track other indicators of child health as well. However, each indicator requires each clinician to track and tally new information, adding to their workload. The challenge is, Mary's health system is designed around indicators. She has a data warehouse, which dictates the data that clinicians must report. She doesn't actually see what's happening on the ground. So how do we fix this? The answer is simple. We focus on Sarah and her baby and generate our indicator data from their care. After all, all of those indicators are really just an aggregate view of children just like Sarah's. We let Allison do her job and simply enter what's happening on the ground in a discrete way. That, in turn, generates the data which generates Mary's indicators. Let's go back to Sarah's first visit. This time, Allison can use her primary care EMR, like Sante Sweet Sante EMR, to document the child's complete care visit. Allison enters the child's weight, and the EMR suggests she give a vaccination. On Sarah's second visit, Allison uses her EMR again. This time, when she enters the child's weight, her EMR alerts her that the child is underweight. 
the EMR also provides Allison with resources to counsel Sarah in better nutrition for her child. The EMR could also alert Allison that giving the child specific vaccinations may be dangerous because the child is too light. Now imagine if we gave each clinic in the country a general purpose primary care EMR. Clinicians could just record what they're doing. That data could automatically be sent to the HMIS. We could then tell whether the data was accurate, calculate dropouts, adherence, and follow-up, as well as any other indicators that we might want. In addition to lowering data entry burden, suggesting the best care, providing follow-up opportunities, and feeding the HMIS, an EMR has other benefits. Let's go back to Alice's clinic, where Sarah has been complaining about frequent and severe stomach problems. Allison could provide care to Sarah and document the encounter in her EMR, the same EMR she was using for Sarah's baby. If Allison were worried about Sarah's condition, she could refer her to a hospital. That's where we'd need another system called a Master Patient Index, which would cross-reference Sarah's identities between the two systems. Meanwhile, nearby at Robert's clinic, he is also using an EMR. He too has been getting lots of complaints about severe stomach problems. At the same time, Joel, a rural clinician with no internet, has also been using Sante Suite Sante EMR offline. He has also been reporting cases of patients with severe stomach problems in his community. The discrete data from these clinics should trigger a warning. Allison and Robert aren't in direct communication with each other, but their primary care EMRs are connected to the district's HMIS. When Joel's EMR comes online, it too can connect to the HMIS. If the HMIS supported business intelligence functions, it could surveil data being generated by the primary care EMRs. This could be used to trigger alerts for Mary. Mary, in turn, could take appropriate action. She could warn local utility companies about potential water quality issues. She could notify the public health department to investigate or staff up the clinics in the area. She could even notify sanitation officials to intervene using her data. We are enabling better care through better data. Sarah gets the best care for her and her family. Allison gets more time to care for her patients and doesn't have to worry about entering indicators. And Mary gets more accurate, more timely access to information. For more information, visit our website.